أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم رضيت بالله رب وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رسولا ونبيا رب أعوذ بك من همزات الشياطين وأعوذ بك رب أن يحضرون ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم continuing on with the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام the legendary military empire the era of Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan picking up from page number 299 the difference between the compilations of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu anhu and Uthman ibn Affan Ibn Atin explains the difference between the compilations of the Abu Bakr Siddiq era and the Umar Uthman ibn Al-Uthman Ibn Affan era radiallahu anhuma was that the former compiled the Quran out of fear that some of it might be lost with the passing away of its memorizers and retainers as it has not been gathered in one place. Therefore, Bakr Siddiq compiled it in the form of pages arranging its ayat as dictated by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In other words, how he had dictated it in the past. Uthman compiled the Quran when differences arose in the way it was being received. Cited rather. This was because people were reciting in their varying dialects. Uh, this led these people to accuse each other of mistakes in its recitation. And this made him fear that the situation might grow worse. Consequently, he compiled the sheet into a single volume, arranging its, its ayat and restricting it to one dialect, namely that of the Quraysh. He based this on the fact that the Quran was revealed in this dialect, even though the chance to recite it in other dialects had been facilitated for the Muslims as well. Least some find its recitation difficult in the beginning. Now, however, he held that there was no need for this, so he limited the copy to only one dialect. Al-Qadi Abu Bakr al-Baqilani comments, Uthman did not intend what Abu Bakr had intended, radiallahu anhuma, when compiling the same Quran. Between the covers, he only wanted to unite the people so that they would recite the Quran in the well-known and authentic way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and disregard everything else. This way they would follow one copy without any chances in the order of ayats or any commentary mixed with the text of the ayats. Also, the ayats whose recitation had been abrogated were not mixed with the established ones that must be recited and memorized. He did this out of fear that the text might become corrupted and people might become confused. Al-Harith Al-Mihasibi comments. The public opinion is that the person who compiled the Qur'an was Uthman ibn Affan. But this is not correct. Uthman only united the people and enabled them to follow one way of recitation after deciding this was the Muhajirin and, and the, that the Muhajirin and the Ansar. He feared that conflict might occur when the people of Iraq and Syria deferred on the correct way of recitation. This being said, the sheets included all the seven readings uh, in which the Qur'an was revealed. The person who put the entire Qur'an together was Abu Bakr Siddiq Ali ibn Abi Talib said, If I became Khalifa, I would do the sheets. I will do with the sheets what Uthman bin Affan had done with them. Al-Qurtubi explains, it may be asked why Umar Uthman, excuse me, it may be asked why Uthman bin Affan united the people to read his copy when Abu Bakr had already done that. We reply that his aim was not to unite the people to recite a complete copy. His aim was not to unite the people to recite a complete copy of the Quran. Do you see how he sent a message to Hafsa requesting her to send the sheets to them so that they could copy them and then return them to her? He only did this because people had begun disagree on the recitation of the Quran as the companions were scattered in different regions. Then these differences worsened and what Hudayfa had mentioned occurred between the people of Syria and the people of Iraq. So going back when he says uh, why would Uthman unite the people uh, 
to read his copy of the Quran when Abu Bakr al-Siddiq had already done that. It says here, we reply that his aim was not to unite the people to recite a complete copy of the Quran. Um, so I don't understand completely why the not is used there. But let's move on to 14.4. Do the Uthmanite copies contain all these seven readings? The scholars of the critique, Sadiq Arjun, may Allah have mercy on him, presents his opinion as follows. The sheets of Abu Bakr upon which the copy of Imam, Imam Uthman was based by the consensus of the Muslim did not contain seven readings in which uh, the Quran was revealed according to authentic traditions. This copy contained one of the readings, which was the one heard in the final reading towards the end of the Prophet Sallallahu life. Uh, the seven readings were initially meant to ease Quranic recitation for the Muslim Ummah, but the ruling was abrogated when the Quran became well known by everyone and had people and their dialects mixed with each other. Imam At-Tahawi states people had been given room to recite in more than one reading because they were unable to recite or to receive the Quran in dialects other than that of their own. This was mainly because they were illiterate and only a few of them knew how to read and write. Therefore, since it was difficult for them to change their dialect and even if they had desired to do so, it would have only been possible through a great effort. Allowances were made for different wordings as long as the meaning were in harmony. They remained like this until uh, literacy increased among the Muslimin, among the Ummah, and their dialects changed to that of Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then they were able to present or they were able to preserve its vocabulary. Once this happened, it was not lawful for them to read in any other way. Ibn Abdul Bar comments, This makes it clear that the seven readings were there only for a specific period of time due to a necessity. Later on, this necessity no longer existed. Consequently, the ruling regarding them was abrogated and the Quran was once again recited in one reading only. At-Tabari states reciting in the seventh readings was not obligatory on the Muslim. It was merely permissible and is and a dispensation that they could avail. When the companions realized that if the Muslims were not united to read in a single reading, they would become divided and differ. They all agreed to unite them and together they are immune to deviation. Moving along now. To page number 302. This reading in which they agreed, they agreed upon scripture have been written and from which the Uthmanit copy had been taken contains the recitation style of these seven readings along with other styles adopted by people and reported from Allah. Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by so many people at all levels that they could not have agreed on something false. This is because the readings mentioned in the hadith do not indicate these styles of recitations. Al Qurtubi comments many of our scholars, uh, such as Ad Dawudi and Abu Sufra, have stated that these seven readings, which are connected to these seven reciters, are not the seven readings in which the companions were allowed to recite. Rather, they all go back to just one reading. This is the reading upon which Osman bin Affan's copy is based. The most reasonable opinion on the, remaining, on the meaning of the readings we think is what is intended by them. The most eloquent in non-dialects of the Arabs found everywhere in the entire Quran. This is the opinion of Al-Qasim ibn Salam Ibn Attiya and a group of other notable scholars and some seven views mentioned by a suyuti in Al-Itqan regarding their meaning also support to this view. 14.5, the number of copies sent by Uthman to the different regions. Having finished the compilation of these sheets, Uthman sent a copy to every corner of the Islamic land and ordered them to burn every other copy that contradicted the one he had sent. 
Scholars differed regarding the number of these new copies. The majority of scholars suggested there were four. Others have cited the number as five, six, seven, or eight. It is said that out of the four copies, one was kept in Medina, while the other three were sent to Syria, Kufra, and Basra. Those who say there were five agree about the first four, but suggest that the fifth was sent to Makkah. Others say that there were six, so they agree on the first five, but differ on the six, with some saying that he kept it for himself, while others suggest that he sent it to Bahrain. Those who say there were seven state that the seven copies or the seventh copy was sent to Yemen. Those who suggested that there were eight copies believe that Sayyidina Uthman kept the eighth copy for his personal use and that this is the one he was reciting when he was martyred in his home. With each copy, Uthman sent someone to instruct the people on the correct style of recitation. Abdullah ibn Sa'd was sent with a copy for Makkah. al mughira ibn Shihab with a copy for Syria. Abdurrahman al-Sulami with a copy for Kufa. Amir ibn al-Qais with a copy for Basra. And Zaid ibn Thabit was ordered to teach the people to read a copy that remained in al Madina. 14.6 The stance of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud on the Uthmanid copy. It has been authentically confirmed that ibn Mas'ud was against Uthman in this matter. All the narrations that indicate this have a weak chain. All the narrations that indicate this have a weak chain. It is clear that he eventually agreed with the rest of, his, of the companions of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the compilation of the Qur'an announced this publicly and ordered the people to adopt the view of the Muslim majority he stated Allah does not take away knowledge suddenly rather he does so through the death of the scholars Allah jalla jalaluhu also will not unite the people of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon misguidance so join them in that which they agree, for the truth is in their agreement. It is said that he conveyed this to Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu as well. It is through the story of the compilation of the Qur'an, we can perceive the companions' deep understanding of the Qur'anic ayats that prohibit differing among each other. Due to his deep insight into these ayats, Hudayfa was shocked to hear the different styles of recitation of the Qur'an. This is why he immediately set out for al Madina and told Uthman what he had seen and heard. Uthman addressed the people at once, warning them about the consequences of such differences. He consulted the companions to correct or concrete steps and resolve the matter. MashaAllah, in this way he closed the door to conflict and this satisfied the Muslim. The hypocrites, however, were enraged. The rancor in their hearts grew larger and they began to re revile him and make this virtuous deed seem like an undesirable innovation. They based their rebellious attempts on proof as feeble as a spider's web. Later, they used those proofs to justify the rebellion against Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu, trying to convince people that this good deed was actually evil and necessitated what they wanted to do. Part 5, the appointment of governors during the Khalifat of Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. Now we're moving on to that chapter. Chapter number 15. The regions under the Muslim rule and Uthman's policy regarding his governors. 15.1. Makkah, when Uthman, excuse me, when Umar ibn al Khattab passed away, the governor of Makkah was Khalid ibn al Az ibn Hisham ibn al Mughira al Makhzumi. When Uthman became the Khalifa, he retained him for some time before dismissing him and appointing Ali ibn Rabi'ah ibn Abdul Uzza in his place. After him, he appointed a number of governors of Makkah, but the exact duration of their rule has not been discovered. Discovered. They also, the exact duration of that ruling or of their rule was not discovered. Among them was Abdullah ibn Amr al Hadrami, who was one of Osman's employees in Makkah. Books of history also confirm that Osman reinstated Khalid ibn al As ibn Hisham 
as the governor and some sources affirm that when Uthman died, Khalid was the governor. However, Ali dismissed him and appointed someone else. It should be noted that Mecca was a special place during Uthman's time, for it was always peaceful, whereas other regions suffered from conflicts towards the end of his life. Uh, moving along now to the page number uh, 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 300. In it, 15.2 Medina Bandina was regarded as one of the most important towns in Osman's time as it was the center of the Khalifa. Delegates from other places as well as the Muslim armies would come to Al Madina. In addition to this, many senior Sahabas from the Muhajirin and the Ansar still lived there. This is why it had special importance as the Khalifa Uthman stayed there as well. He kept an eye on everything that happened there to the extent that he would inquire about the price of groceries and how the people were faring. Whenever he went to perform the Hajj, he delegated one of the companions to do his job in Medina. He would usually delegate Zaid ibn Athabit. There was a treasury and account books to record the allowances and stipends in Al Madina, just like in other regions. The city was also regarded as one of the most peaceful Islamic areas in this time of Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan. An exception, of course, is the turmoil that occurred during the end of Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan's life. When the conflict provoking armies arrived, Uthman was besieged, and some of the senior companions. Left. Uh, inshallah, we will we will stop here on the page number three hundred and eight, uh, bulletin four, fifteen point three. Subhanakallah, wa wa la illa billahi al-Ali al-Azim. Subhanak Rabbika Rabbil Azza wa Jalla. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin.